Alrighty, what is up everybody? <clears throat> Excuse me, it's Mesa. We are live right now on YouTube. We are going to go over uh, a few things. One is uh, a number of notes uh, that I have regarding the reveal stream they just did on Bungie for Forsaken. That's redundant, for Forsaken, which is the new expansion coming to Destiny 2 in September. What's up, Branson? What's up, Rebel? What's up, Sean? I'll say hello to all the sponsors in a second. Uh, in about two minutes, I could make a quick announcement. Uh, in exa yeah, exactly two minutes. But I've got a bunch of notes here. As we go through this, guys, I need to be very careful in what I say because I still am under NDA from the Destiny 2 Summit we had where uh, I got to see some things and talk to the developers. Uh, but in about one minute, I could make a quick announcement. So let me say hi to all the... Uh, Sponsors out there. And hey, K Dub is there. What's up, K Dub? Psycho Fit Nerd, Destroyer, Raymond Summit, Neo Xanther, Branson, Sean Foster, Rebel Wild. What's up, everybody? Gator Mag, Destroyer, see you again. Did I get everyone's name? PRC Affliction, Brian Glenn. Good morning, everybody. All right, folks, they updated the Destiny of the Game website. We're going to go through that. Uh, we're going to watch one of the reveal uh, videos that they have up. I'm going to make a quick announcement uh, at 1 p.m., which will be one minute from now. Uh, Psycho Fit Nerd, I am very, very excited. I'm very excited. You have no idea because we finally get to uh, talk a lot about uh, tons of stuff here today, guys. But I have a bunch of notes here in front of me, which we're going to go through. All right, it's 1 p.m. All right, so I can make the following statement right now. Here we go. Gambit is definitely the new game mode that's coming to Destiny 2 with Forsaken. I did play an early developmental build, no, development build, when I went to the Community Summit, and next week I will be at E3, and I could share more information. So next week, guys, you're going to want to turn on notifications, you're going to want to follow me on Twitter, you want to follow me on Instagram, because uh, I might be posting a whole bunch of stuff next week when I am at E3 uh, that might be relating to all this stuff. As you can see, I am... Uh, Kind of dancing around NDA here because I don't want to break NDA. But yeah, I will be going to E3. And next week I will have more information regarding Gambit. But I did get to play it at the Community Summit. And I also um, was able to just give you a general impression a long time ago. Where I said it, it, it was a game that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I wanted to play more. But I can't give you any more details. So anything I talk about Gambit today will be straight up. Oh, Sean and uh, PRC Affliction, you like the new emojis for uh, Forsaken? So anything I talk about with regards to Gambit is coming from my notes from the reveal stream, okay? I'm not saying anything else that I know about Gambit in terms of what I got to experience playing an early developmental build over at Bungie Studios. All right, guys? So let's get into this here. Let me put my piece of paper over here, and we can get into this. So, all right. First off, you know what? Let's watch the reveal trailer real quick. I'm going to mute my microphone. Let me make sure I get my volume up here. And uh, let's watch the reveal trailer, and I'm going to mute myself. We have this opportunity that we wouldn't have had years ago to ship a game and then really collaborate with people outside the studio to figure out, like, what is the best version of that? Honestly, yeah. Like, we're building something the community has been asking for, and it's accumulation of everything that we believe the game needs to be. The upside to that is we're not honing anything back. All the feedback we've heard for the last year is this is it, it's in Forsaken. We want this release to have a, a different tone and a different vibe. We sort of just embrace that Western revenge vibe. You're going to a darker place. You're going to take on a different role as a guardian. A barren landscape with like the asteroid vibe with like tumbleweeds mm -hmm. and I mean that just sounded cool. Grit man, want to bring the dirt back. But what better way to start a story than to start it with a prison break? Right. Cade's been filling this prison <laughs> with, with bad guys that are that are really bad and so when it breaks things can happen to all the world. The first place you're going to go to is the Tangled Shore, which is a new part of the reef that you've never seen before. That's right, my friend. It's a collection of lashed together asteroids yes. and rocks out and in the asteroid It's belt. very otherworldly, and it's uh, full of... Uh, Pirates and assassins yep, and bad guys. Thieves. It's become a lawless place. It truly is a frontier. It's completely taken over. 
the most malevolent force there is the scorn. They're very aggressive. They're always going to charge and push you. The barons are the top dogs in the scorn, and each one has gone back and like committed nefarious crimes. I think of it as the reverse Magnificent Seven, like the worst of the worst criminals. You are hunting down these different barons. In fact, they're called baron hunts. So one baron is a sniper, and you have a sniper versus sniper battle with him. Another baron is this big, giant, hulking melee character. One of the things we're most excited about is the new weapon system. Hey, if you like Destiny 2, great, play that way. But if you like Destiny 1, great, play that way. But if you're crazy, why not three shotguns, right? Just for the fun of it. We need to have as many ways as possible, and then we need to have people fighting about it. Like, nah, man, you, you f***ed up, you're taking the wrong weapons, or can I say <laughs> So random rolls are coming back. Every single weapon is going to feel different when it drops. And we're improving the mod system so you can customize your weapon the way you want it. We've got a whole new masterwork style system coming together where you actually are able to kind of move your levels up over time. And so there's investment back on the weapons again. New supers, yeah. Crazy, crazy new what's, supers. What's your favorite? Fire knives are mm. awesome, which is a different take on Golden Gun. We took a lot of uh, inspiration from Rise of Iron. Cast that thing. You got a huge hammer now, and you slam that thing down, and it sends out this fire in front of you that then creates a fire tornado. We got to take it to the next level, you know? <laughs> the idea that anyone who plays, however they play it, they're going to have some new way to, to engage. Yeah. I'm in love with the new Void Warlock uh, teleportation that's like super anime, just like do 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 do. Ba -ba! We've been having great games with the the Arc Warlock. Basically, cast this thing, he pulls back. Yeah, and it's gonna break the game, and I think that's amazing. Yeah, you know. <laughs> we also wanted a new weapon type that felt meaningful, so we came up with a bow and arrow, so, which seems kind of crazy, but when you use it. You it, feel like godlike. It is utilitarian, it's fantastical, it's also sci-fi. So we have a short range bow, we have a medium range bow, we have a long range bow. We built this guy who is like supposed to be super techy. You're like, why would you ever choose a bow in a game that has an automatic, you know, machine gun? But boy, it's deadly. I mean that's a nice machine gun you got there, buddy, but right? And it's and then it's done. The biggest thing for me going into production on this game was like a new way to play, a new thing to do that like is new to Destiny. Let's see what we've got. We want to be able to give players what they want, but also surprise them. Gambit is a brand new mode. Destiny begs to marry PvE and PvP together. It's like adding bacon to peanut butter and jelly. You start off uh, being able to see the other team that you're going to compete against, so you can taunt each other, you can emote. Each team is in their own separate arena, and they're being assaulted by combatants. They're dropping moats for you to collect, you bank them. When you put them in your bank, you're going to send a blocker over to the other side that locks their bank down. They can't put moats into it until they take out that blocker. Filling up your bank with the moats is how you summon your primeval. You burn it down, that's it. Round's over. The interesting part is that we allow one person from your team to go over to the other side and physically invade. I mean, I've seen people that just hate PvP. Like, the first time they invade, and they get multiple kills, they'll come back and they'll be like, suck it! It's awesome. <laughs> we leave the raid team alone. Yeah. I mean, if you can't tell, like, we just kind of let them do their own thing. But we, this, we have Joe like, over there. For this next raid, we wanted to get back to the epic adventure where you're going out to slay a big monster again. This raid has more bosses than any raid we've ever had before, and we're really excited to get players in there. The raid is actually about more than just the raid. It's about the, the Dreaming City, the place that the raid exists. And it's an in-game destination that we've never done before. It's the Awoken homeland. I could talk about the Dreaming City for hours. It's like if the Vault of Glass and Dreadnought uh, had a baby. 
if they were right. like twins. Or the twi twins. Yeah, that's actually more accurate. Yeah, they're like, like twins. twins. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. had twins, yeah. and then you took those twins and you just you put them on the doorstep of Peter Jackson, raised them as his own, and then that's the Dreaming City. It is magical and weird and mysterious. It's designed to be a destination that has puzzles that you need to solve. A lot of hidden corners, lots of passageways that might not seem to exist the first time. And the Raiders, they affect this destination. They change it for everyone. It's like this cyclical end game place where there's just secrets and different activities that unveil over time. So the Dreaming City that you see at launch is not gonna be the same Dreaming City two, three weeks later. So with every design decision we've made for the Forsaken, like the first thing we ask is, how will the community react to this? Players want their investment in Destiny to matter, and they want to be able to see that reflected in the content. We knew we wanted to do something for the collectors in our game, so we built a feature called the Collections. It's a way for you to track all the items that you can go out and acquire. There's so much gear in our game. There are 2,000 items you can get. Go get them. You can look at sets and you can say, I haven't filled out this set. What do I have to do to go get it? I want to find like how many guns in the world I can actually go look now. We also had a triumphs thing, which is just acknowledging your achievement. It like ties into records, it ties into lore. It's a thing that can help you drive like, hey, I want to do that. And if I do those things, I can get a title. This, like I can have a title yeah, floating over like, my name that says that I'm a god or whatever. Not, not me, but like you. <laughs> Wanting Forsaken to feel like a game that never ends. So we're gonna reinforce the hobby and make the experience something that can be played night overnight. We're changing the weapon slots. We're changing how the pursuits work. We're adding new features like the collections and the triumphs. We built Gambit. We've got a whole bunch of new weapons to chase, exotics that are really powerful. We have Lisa focusing on some sweet new exotic armor. Maybe we gun overboard, like dialed it too high. Or to go out there and collect in the world, exotic armor pieces to go out there and hunt. We're working on armor perks, random rolls, new mod system, new subclass paths. We're making Forsaken for people who love Destiny. Making a game that we can all love, that, that is the goal. That's what we're gonna constantly be pushing towards, always. Everything we're building is through that lens. Alrighty, so what'd you get? Whoa, let me shut that volume down. Man, that dream, that city, the, what's it called? Dreaming City, Dream City. Looks amazing, guys. And yeah, did you guys catch the thorn? Or it looks like a thorn. I think the thorn is coming back. All right, folks, let's go through everything here. We're going to go through the Destiny of the Game website where we can learn all the details, including the annual pass that's coming out. Some more stuff about Gambit. Uh, as I said in the intro, I got to play an early build of Gambit at the Destiny Community Summit. I'll be able to share more information with you at E3, or when I'm out there, at E3 next week. So make sure you hit that notification button because uh, you don't want to miss what I might have for you guys next week. All right, so let's just start jumping into things here. So anything I talk about with regards to Gambit or stuff that I saw at the Summit, I'm strictly going by what was said on the stream today and also what we have from the website. So let's dive into... Um, the actual DLC itself. So, what's going to Forsaken? Now, I believe this is going to be something that's going to be ongoing and added, well, like basically added to all freaking year long, right? So, the hunt is on. Take justice into your own hands as you venture into a new frontier filled with enemies, allies, untold mysteries, and treasures waiting to be uncovered. All right. Next up, new locations. The most lawless frontier in all of the reef. The Tangled Shore is a dangerous web of asteroids lashed together. Its, is its isolated location, far from the vanguard and awoken authorities, make it an ideal home for pirates and outlaws seeking marooned treasure. That kind of has a little bit of a uh, Archon's Forge, if not Prison of Elders look to it. Because we know Kate Six has been filling up the prison for not uh, like nonstop, right? In the lore, all right. New enemies. The hunt is on for eight barons who have escaped the prison of elders. Look at that big old take. I don't know. I mean, look at the taken. No, it looks like taken. That's fallen. They look like taken. Your pursuit of these fugitives will take you to uncharted regions and ultimately reveal long lost awoken secrets. All right, we're gonna get new supers now. They talked about this on the stream today that it looks like. I, uh, they didn't say all of them, but they did say a whole bunch of the new subclasses. I think are going to get a new subclass tree. 
That was one of the quotes on the stream there today. So new Supras, wield new super abilities and feel renewed power. There we can see some sort of Night stalker is. She's got a, it looks like a quick fang, but looks like uh, that's one of the new Supras right there. Uh, we're getting bows, if you didn't see a few times in the trailer. We have bows, bow and arrows. So new, new weapons and gear, uncover possible uh, powerful weapons, like the all new legendary bow and collect new exotic gear. So I'm going to say this thing, whatever that is, that looks like some sort of exotic auto rifle there. That looks really cool. All right, Gambit. That's the new game mode. We're going to go into a separate section, actually look at all the details of it. So fight, collect, bank, invade. This is an all-new hybrid 4v4 mode combines the best of PvE and PvP. So folks, this is the new game mode. It's called Gambit. I will have more information next week coming from E3. And yeah, it's a combination of PvE and PvP. I'm surprised a lot of people didn't ask me that question when I said I got to play a new game mode when I went to the Community Summit. Uh, we're going to talk about the annual pass. So this is kind of a new way they're doing things rather than just having like a DLC and then you have uh, a season pass and then you have uh, like Expansion 1, Expansion 2. But I did see in the uh, finer notes here that you do have to own, I, I think, you have to own Curse of Osiris and Warmind to be able to partake or, um, I think, purchase Forsaken. We'll get into all the details as we go through this, guys. What's up, Slavi? Thanks for being a sponsor. Uh, here we go. So alongside seasonal updates and live events available to every Destiny 2 player, Forsaken Annual Pass provides bonus rewards and introduces three premium content releases. Each release delivers new experiences to Destiny 2. Forsaken includes activities, end game content, and an arsenal of powerful weapons, armor, and gear to earn. So we see here we have the uh, Black Armory. That's going to come in winter 2018. I'm going to predict that's probably going to be December. We have Joker's Wild. That's going to be the next one in the spring. And then in the summer, we've got the Penubra. So these are going to be all the different expansions. Now, we have different types of expansions here. So it looks like we've got the Standard Edition, Forsaken Plus Annual Pass. So it looks like you could just buy Forsaken if you want, or you can get the Forsaken Plus the Annual Pass, which means you'll get Forsaken, plus you'll get these other added things that will come in winter, spring, summer, something like that. I don't know. Then there's the Digital Deluxe Edition. Now, uh, I wonder if it looks like you get some sort of bow, we're going to go through all this. We're going to go through all the details in a second, guys. Now, this looks all digital. I wonder if they're going to have a um, physical edition, kind of like they did with the Taken King, where they came out with the legendary edition, and it came, I believe it came with the strange coin. I don't know. I have it somewhere sitting off to the side of my little bungee shrine over there. So those are the three versions of that. All right, let's dive a little bit deeper into things here. Let's go back up to the top here. So let's actually go back. And we're going to go take a look at what they have for Gambit. So we're going to scroll down here in a second. And here's the information. So Gambit, the only hybrid game mode that combines the best of team PvE and PvP. Now, if you saw on the uh, live stream, they explain uh, basically how it works. And I'm going to go to my notes here. Now, this is stuff from the stream. I'm not breaking NDA. This, this was exactly from the stream. Um, let's see, Gambit's PvE and PvP. It's a separate arena. So this is going to be separate from the Crucible and Strikes. It's going to have its own playlist within the directory, guys. So, collect moats, lock, bank, um, you're going to bank them, and then you can basically, what they said on stream, is you can bank enough points, and then you can lock down the other team's bank so that they can't actually put moats into their bank, if that makes any sense. And then when you are you bank enough, you can summon what's called a Prime Evil. I think that was Lars that said that. And once you defeat that Prime Evil, you win that round. So let's go through the details here stri uh, straight up from the Destiny of the Game website. So this is Gambit. And we don't know who this character is right here. We don't have a name for him or anything. Uh, the all-new hybrid for... Well, actually, they had a nickname for him at the uh, summit. They wouldn't tell us his real name. All right. The all-new hybrid 4v4 mode combines the best of PvE and PvP. Two teams of four race to two teams of four race to summon a prime evil enemy and be the first to burn it down. Disrupt the other team by sending combatant blocker or invading directly with one of your own players. So here is you can basically send a blocker, which, which means you're going to send enemies in there. They show this on stream, where you're going to send some enemies and shut their bank down. Or, I think one of you, I don't know, maybe more of you, can go into the other enemies, um, your, the people you're playing against, in their area, and mess with them. <laughs> and basically disrupt what they're doing. 
Uh, let's scroll down some more here. So fight. Shoot aliens until they're dead. Your enemies will gain... Uh, your enemies will get stronger over time, so work together to defeat them. Now that looks like a new super right there. And uh, th is that a Titan or is that a Hunter? I don't know. But here are some Fallen right here. All right, collect. So pick up the moats that drop when your enemies fall. You could hold up the 15, but you lose them if you die. So remember, you're going to have to kill things, it looks like, and you're going to have to bank them. And then on stream, they said once you bank enough of them, you can then summon a prime evil, or you can lock down the enemy's team, the people that you're playing against, the other four. That's why it's semi-PVE and semi-PVP. Lock down their bank. Then here's the bank itself. So drop your moats uh, in to the center structure. And this is it right here. And he's about to put, put some of his moats in there. Uh, earn a blocker by depositing 5, 10, or 15 moats at once. So it looks like you want to kill a bunch of things, collect a bunch of moats, and then bank them. However, don't die, because you're going to lose those moats. And then you're going to summon a primeval when your team banks 75 moats. So you have four players. This looks like it's uh, from the stream we saw. 4v4. And then from there, you're going to be killing ads, um, collecting these moats, and you want to bank them. right? And then when you reach 75 moats that you've banked, you're going to summon a primeval. You kill that primeval, and then they said on stream that that's going to end the round. So here we go. This is what they were talking about before. Invade. When your bank reaches 25 and 50, you can send one player through a portal to invade the opponent's arena with one goal. Disruption. So I believe that's going to be the PvP section of this guy. So it's PvE where you're shooting a bunch of ads, you're collecting moats, you're banking them, you're sending blockers to the other side. But then they showed on stream also that you can go in the other enemy... Well, you can go into their realm. And then from there, you can... Cause some chaos, right? All right, uh, the annual pass, right? We just talked about this already. We talked about that already. Let's go back to the main page right here. So some notes I have right here from the reveal stream is we are getting a new weapon slot system. Okay, folks? Now, um, they did say if you, let's see, quote here from Josh Hamrick, if you want to run three shotguns, you can run three shotguns. Random rolls are indeed coming back, but also mods. So, uh... They said mods will be a way we can further customize our weapons, but random rolls are coming back. And I believe everyone did spot Thorn was on the screen. or It, it looked like Thorn. I don't know if it looked exactly like Thorn, but who knows. Anyway, so we saw that. And then also, you know, actually, let me while I talk through all these notes here, we're going to go through. I'm going to play the trailer for you guys, but I'm going to mute it so it's just in the background so you can watch while I talk over the stuff here. So watch reveal. We're going to let that thing go. So a few things. Weapon randomization and weapon slots. So basically, guys, you can play this as if you wanted to play Destiny 2. Or, as you saw on screen from the reveal stream, you could play it if you want as Destiny 1. Right? So you could run a, let's say, scout rifle. They showed on screen uh, a shotgun and a sniper. For me personally, I like the Destiny 2 weapon system the way it is right now. So more than likely, I'm still going to run... Like an auto rifle, a scout rifle, and then a, uh, a power weapon, right? But they even said on screen, if you want, you could put a sniper in your primary slot. So you could run, if you want, three snipers or three shotguns. Josh Hamrick said, hey, if you want to run three shotguns. Now, how that will work in PvP, that remains to be seen. I think what they'll probably end up doing is just make you have limited ammo or something. Because, obviously, if you spawn in to PvP with three shotguns, there's no way they can let you have all that ammo. They're more than likely... I'm going to make PvP, I'm thinking, kind of like Destiny 1, how it was with green crates, right? Like, you probably spawn in with limited ammo at the beginning of a game. Let's say you run a scout, a shotgun, and a power weapon, right? No, I'm sorry. You run a, let's go with a scout, shotgun, and rocket launcher. You probably will spawn in with no rocket launcher ammo, and maybe even no shotgun ammo, or just like five rounds in your shotgun. Then as you go and play PvP, as you kill people... You probably pick it up, right? You probably pick up that ammo from them. And then from there, I would think that um, they may have crates or something that you'll have to pick up. But yeah, so new weapon system. If you want to play like D1, you could play like D1. If you want to play like D2, you could still play like D2. I personally, I like to play like D2. Next up, okay, so random rolls and mods are coming back. That's a big one for me. I, I was, I've been lobbying for this for a very, very long time. All right, what else we got? New masterworks are in place. Uh, they're gonna have. They mentioned weapon leveling. Do you guys remember the good old days when you got a weapon in Destiny One and you had to spend a lot of time 
either grinding bounties to level the level that thing up and get the perks to unlock, especially in early Destiny 1, and make that thing powerful. So, uh, new weapon leveling. Uh, they talked about new supers. and they Okay, I, I have in my notes here, all subclasses are getting a new subclass tree. I have that right here in my notes. They said that on stream. Uh, there will be a bow and arrow. Uh, I'm just looking on stream right now. All right, yeah. Uh, trackless way. Okay, sorry about that. All right, uh, there is going to be a new weapon class that's a bow and arrow. Hopefully, they make an exotic version. You know what? Whenever they introduce a new class, there's got to be an exotic and different legendary versions of it. Uh, let's see. And for the bows, they said here there's going to be short, medium, and long-range bows that uh, will be in the game. All right, so the new uh, the new game mode Gambit we talked about. It's PvE and PvP. Separate arena. So there's going to be like the Vanguard Strike playlist. There's going to be the um, Crucible playlist. And there will be a Gambit playlist, right? So, collect moats, you want to lock and bank, you want to summon a primeval. When you summon the primeval, then you actually win. Hey, what's up, Uncanny Deadpool? I like your sub-loyalty badge icon, because you've been a sub for, I think, almost a year. Two years, probably, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much, Uncanny Deadpool. All right, they talked about a new raid, and they said, this is a quote from, I believe, Joe, uh, more bosses than they've ever had in any raid. That's <laughs> That was music to my ears, because of the fact that they really did, um, I think a lot of the feedback they got from Leviathan was, great raid, but just not enough bosses. You know what I mean? It, it was more mechanic-driven, and I think we want to go back to, we want to kill some bosses. So this new raid that's going to take place on the uh, Dreaming City, which is on an all-new destination that we're getting with this DLC. So more bosses in any raid. It's going to take place in the Dreaming City. There's going to be, I'm just looking at my notes here, uh, lots of puzzles, lots of hidden passages, lots of activities. And they also said dr the, the Dreaming City is going to be something that's going to change from week to week or over time. So we can read into that all we want. I'm not exactly sure what the heck they were talking about with that. But basically, the Dreaming City is, it looks like it's going to be something that's going to evolve. All right, so I'm pretty psyched about that. All right, we got here in my notes. Random rolls. We got, okay, we're going to talk about collections here in a sec. All right, so Dreaming City was built for Endgame. Uh, most difficult challenges and secrets. Uh, it ties into the raid. New sponsor, Lag78. Everyone spam some hype emojis and some... Um, some forsaken emojis. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Mesa Army. Much appreciated. Love you. All right, so um, let's see. Go back to my notes here. So, da, da, da. Dreaming City. All right, all right, so built for Endgame, most difficult challenges and secrets, ties into the raid, and uh, E3, we're going to get the story reveal. So right now, we really don't know what's been going on. We just know Kate 6 is involved. We know there's some shenanigans going on over at the reef, and we got to go take care of it. So, folks, we are getting a full-blown raid. I know people were kind of speculating early on that, hey, are we getting a raid? Is it going to be just a different type of endgame activity? Would Gambit be an endgame activity? Uh, I don't believe they said on screen whether uh, Gambit would be endgame. I'm imagining it's probably going to have some sort of endgame stuff tied to Gambit. Not 100% sure. I don't have that in my notes here from, from the stream today. Uh, but Gambit will be at E3 and will be at GuardianCon. So uh, I will be at E3. And uh, I will have more information for you on Gambit. Gambit is the new game mode that I got to play when I went to the Destiny Community Summit. But then also, it's going to be at GuardianCon. That was a big announcement yesterday, was that Bungie will be at GuardianCon. Thank God. I'm very happy about that, because I kind of thought that Guardian Radio, my podcast, I'm with uh, K-Dub and Mark, that we in the Destiny Community Podcast, Pope Bear and those guys, that we were going to be the only ones flying the Destiny 2 flag. No, Bungie will be there, and they will have Gambit there for people to play. So I'm going to Guardian Con. I'll be there with um, my co-host from Guardian Radio, K-Dub and Mark. We will have a booth. And uh, come over and say hi. But also, if you come to, uh, to Guardian Con, make sure you go play some Gambit and give them some feedback. Uh, what else do I have in my notes here? Okay, so the annual pass. Let's all right. Right after this trailer finishes playing out, let's jump in and learn more about this annual pass, okay? Because I have some screenshots here. Now I can't put them on actual screen right now because uh, let's see here. Um, we didn't talk about records or collections here. Let me just pull all this stuff up on my desktop so I can kind of talk through it. So. We are getting, okay, so the new developmental roadmap. All right, that I want to pull up for you guys. Let me shut down this video right here, and we're going to go over to the new developmental roadmap. So let me close out of here, and let's take a look, because we got some new information. They just put out an updated roadmap, which is right here. All right, folks, so here we go. 
1.2.3 is going to hit July 17th. Now, that's going to be our new seasonal event called Solstice of Heroes. Then 6v6 Quick Play is coming back. Sponsors, can you spipe, uh, spam some hype emojis? Spipe. Can you spipe some uh, hype emojis? 6v6 Quick Play is coming. I, I'm very excited about that. I love 6v6. I just feel like 6v6. I, I do like 4v4s, but for me, fun, fun is in the 6v6 uh, game modes. And I, and I hope with Forsaken in, in, in the future, they start developing maps that caters a little bit more to 6v6. I sometimes feel like 6v6 on some of the maps that were built for 4v4s, ah, the spawns get a little bit wonky here and there. All right, we're getting bounties back. So as you recall from Destiny 1, that was a big thing we gave feedback, or at least I voiced my opinion on is. The destination challenges, they're cool, you know, because you log in, you see what you got to do, but it's not, like, really apparent, okay, here's something, here's a goal I need to achieve. There was just something different about Destiny 1 where you would pick up a bounty, and it was tangible. You'd pick it up, you'd put it in your inventory and say, all right, uh, I got to go kill 10 Minotaurs. All right, well, where can I find them? Oh, you know what? I'm going to go to the Citadel over on Venus and kill them, and I'll do some patrols, maybe get into some shenanigans with the Taken over there. So that's, that's really cool that bounties are coming back. Uh, expansion 1 and 2 Raid Prestige Lair, they're going to be coming July 17th, so Spire of Stars and Eater of Worlds. Now, my question is, are they going to put new loot in those Prestige Lairs? Because for me, I need the carrot, guys. Because right now, the carrot, there's no real carrot for the Spire of Stars. It's, it's a really great uh, armor set. I have... Almost a full set on my Warlock, only because I got some drops the first time I did it with WTF Game Nation. And then I also bought the gear from Benedict99, but I need more weapons, man. I got the sidearm, and the sidearm's pretty beast, but I need some more weapons. I really hope when they do Expansion 1 and 2 Raid, um, the Prestige Raid Lairs, throw in some new weapons, Bungie, please. <laughs> uh, PC Clan Text Chat is coming with 1.2.3, July 17th. Uh, year 1 Triumphs. Uh, we're going to find out more about that on Bungie.net. K-Dub or anyone else, can you let me know if that's up yet on Bungie.net, the Year 1 Triumphs? Because I'll go through that right now on stream. Uh, Cody, thank you for the donation. You are a legend. Everyone give Cody some hype in chat. Okay, more exotic armor sandbox changes. Now, we got some in 1.2.1, and we got two exotics buffed for each class. And the Warlocks seem to have gotten it best because Luna Faction Boots are amazing. Sun Braces are amazing. So uh, hopefully they start tuning some more and give maybe the Titans a little love. Not so much the Hunters. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, Hunters get a little annoying sometimes in PvP. All right, enough of my personal opinions on Hunters. All right, year two. So this is when Forsaken's coming out, and it's coming out September 4th. That's going to be the date we have right here. So gear collections is the first thing. Now, let me pull up my desktop here. I can't put it on screen, but I can kind of talk through it. I took a bunch of screenshots through the actual stream. So basically they showed the way uh, record, no, I'm sorry, gear collection works, is that you can basically go into your persons, not into a kiosk, and see everything that you have. It'll have your kinetic energy power. It's going to have exotics. You can track every exotic that you have, but also it'll have ones that you don't have, and you got to figure out, okay, what do I need to do to go get that thing? Uh, same thing with emblems, uh, events, leveling, open world. There's going to be records for, um, I don't know, I'm straying from gear collections here because I'm looking through the pictures here. But, um, yeah, there's going to be a number of things where on our persons, because there's going to be new tabs. You're going to have clan, collections, triumphs, character, and inventory. So the triumphs is going to be, obviously, things, it says in-game triumphs. So those are going to be activities and things are that, I guess, are going to be similar to record books. What else we got here? We have um, weapon slot changes. We talked about that. Weapon randomization or uh, random rolls. Mod system update. Okay, yes, yeah, so mods are coming. So time splitter, if you're in chat, apologies. I thought they were going to, my speculation was they were going to going, uh, that they were going to get rid of the mods because we haven't heard anything about mods 2.0 in ages and just move fully to random rolls. But no, guys, we're getting random rolls and also mods too. So we'll hopefully be able to really customize our stuff. All right, what else we got here? So uh, bulk shader deletion. Thank you. I hit 1,000 blue geometry shaders, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, we're going to get four new Crucible maps, 200 additional vault slots, so we'll have 500 total. In-game lore, and when you looked at the collections and in-game stuff on your collections and triumphs and all that sort of stuff, they had flare vehicles, ghosts, armor, weapons, and exotics. 
And I'm trying to find the screenshot I took, which I can't put up on screen because I'm just not a, on my computer there. Uh, there was one where it said lore. And for lore, there was a boatload of lore to collect. Let me see. Vanguard. Here we go. Yeah, so lore. There was a tab that said records unlocked. It said zero out of 246. So we're going to be collecting lore throughout the game. And that's something that I think the community has really been uh, pushing for is we want more lore. We want more story. We want more stuff to discover and learn more about what exactly is going on. We'll get into the whole pricing of the annual pass and everything, guys, in just a little bit. I, I see that. I see a lot of it in chat right now. All right. So uh, in-game lore, new bounties, power matters in Iron Banner and Trials. All right, folks. So uh, I'm very happy about this. I play with a lot of PvP, well, my best friends who I play PvP with, they don't do much PvE at all. But you know what? Now they're going to have to do PvE because of the fact that power is going to matter. And if you want to uh, level up fast and get powerful, well, you got to do PvE and PvP. All right. Geek Girl, hello. So $80 for everything. Now, is that including the season pass? Let's talk about how this thing is going to be priced out. Uh, let me close that of you. All right. Volume's down on that. So let's take a look at this, Digital Deluxe Edition. So hopefully this will take us to the price. All right, so what do we got here? Do we have a price here? We have a pre-order. All right, so let's take a look at this. So this is the Digital Deluxe Edition. So get the ultimate Destiny 2 Forsaken experience with the Digital Deluxe Edition. Includes a copy of Destiny 2 Forsaken premium digital content and the annual pass to continue the hunt. You get the Awoken Legend set. So you get the Wrath Majestic Legendary Bow Ornament. You get the Dirge Paladin Emblem, uh, Vestian Ghost Shell, Fire Team Medallions. All right, so that's for leveling up, obviously. Uh, you get the Forsaken Two. No, I'm sorry, Destiny Two Forsaken Annual Pass. So, alongside uh, alongside seasonal updates and live events available to every Destiny Two player, Forsaken Annual Pass provides bonus rewards and introduces three premium content releases: anticipated Winter 2018, Spring 2007, uh, 2019. In summer 2019. Uh, following years of strife, what remains of the reef has fallen to lawlessness. You and Kate Six are sent to personally investigate the recent arrest. Upon arrival, you soon discover the most wanted criminals in the prison of elders have organized an escape. Beyond the vanguard's authority, you'll pursue these fugitives deep into the reef, explore the new regions, awaken new powers, earn powerful weapons, and uncover long-lost awoken secrets. The hunt is on. So hunt down uh, the eight barons and their crew, uh, the new destinations, the Tangled Shore, and the Dreaming City. So we're getting two destinations, and they said the Dreaming City is going to be more of where the... Um, what you might call it, the end game stuff is, and I believe that's where they said the raid is going to be. All right, so we're seeing some prices in chat here. So forty bucks and eighty bucks. All right, so is it eighty for the digital deluxe edition right here? All right, um, we're getting a brand new raid, full blown raid, guys. That's going to be uh, really exciting based on what they were talking about. They more bosses than we've had in any other raid before. Uh, let's see, introducing Gambit, a four v four competitive PVE mode, but it is all um, it does also have some PVP elements to it. Wield new powers with nine additional supers. All right, there we go. So we have the. I was speculating before. Yes, okay, nine additional supers. So it looks like every subclass is getting a new super. We saw some of them on screen during the video, and I'll play that towards the end, and we could just then chat and chat. That's redundant. All right, uh, collect new exotic weapons, armor, and gear. All new weapon archetype, the legendary bow. We also have, let's see, uh, Slavi says the digital deluxe is 80 bucks. Okay. Uh, new story missions, adventures, destination activities, and more. So let's see. If we go, all right, so if we go to pre can I go to pre order here? I don't think so. Here we go. Buy now. So digital deluxe, let's see. Do we have a price right here? No. Oh, wait. Uh, do we have it yet? No. All right. But here's the differences. Between, all right. So you can buy Destiny 2 Forsaken. You can get the annual pass or the Awoken Legend set. Well, you know me, guys. I'll be buying the Awoken Legend set. So expansion plus annual pass is 70 bucks. So, so looking at the prices, I know everyone's probably already freaking out already. Let's look at it this way, folks. You're going to pay that, and then you're going to get content for the rest of the year. All right, that's exactly all right. And you are gonna get banned right now because I don't like your username. Where are you? Hold on. Uh, I'm going to ban you. Hide user on this channel. Bye bye. All right, expansion is only, all right. So the expansion is forty bucks. So it was exactly what I predicted, folks. Was that the expansion was gonna be like the Taken King, and I believe the Taken King was forty bucks, right? Uh, 
Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Relax, Muhammad. I see Muhammad in chat saying, what, now I have to pay 80 bucks? You could pay 80 bucks for the digital deluxe edition. Relax. So, K-Dub says, Forsaken is 40 bucks. Forsaken plus annual pass is 70, and digital deluxe is 80. But remember, folks, that is going to be content for the entire year. Or no, I'm sorry, more than a year. Not 2018. That's going... That's going to be for the full uh, two, year two of Destiny 2, which is Forsaken, basically. So let's all kind of cool our cucumbers here, folks, and relax. All right, so I think I pretty much went over everything here, guys. Uh, I'm going to let the video play out here, but just to chime in again. When you get the annual pass, you're getting one, two, three new DLCs, basically. So it looks like they're changing their model here. So rather than just you know getting a season pass or buying an expansion, you're... Look, you can pay 40 bucks for Forsaken, you can get the annual pass, and that's going to give you Black Armory for the winter of 2018, Joker's Wild for the spring of 2019, and then uh, Penubra for the summer of 2019. And it seems like these are all going to expand upon everything that's in Forsaken. So anyway, and you know what, I'll, we're going to hit 200,000 subscribers soon, hopefully, guys, and you know what, I'll do a boatload of giveaways before this actually comes out, All right, guys? So let's, uh, let's watch the reveal again with... No sound, and I'll just chat with you guys before we let the stream archive. Rebel Wild, so uh, let's chat it up, guys. What do you guys think of the reveal? I'm psyched, guys, and I'll be bringing you more information next week. Uh, my voice just cracked right there. When I go to E3, Rebel Wild says, People complain just to complain. I agree. I call it recreational outrage. Uh, Console Play says, Great deal for a crap ton of content. Awesome. Can't wait, man. Yeah, look, guys. Slav and Slavi spamming some exotic emotes. I like that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Look, guys, you buy the uh, the annual pass and the DLC, you're getting content for the next year from Forsake, when Forsaken drops. Uh, what website am I using? DestinyTheGame.com. Sean, look at the text I just sent you. K-Dub, hold on. Okay. K-Dub sent me a text. Okay. Okay, yeah, so 40 bucks for Forsaken, $70 for Forsaken plus uh, the annual pass, 80 bucks for the digital deluxe edition. One is I'll, I'll be giving away some of those annual passes uh, before this drops, right? Two, you got to look at it. Look, folks, look at it in context, guys. Context. Um, the Taken King, you paid for it, and then you got Rise of Iron a year later. This is basically the same thing, except they're giving us those other uh, things along with it for winter, spring, and summer that comes along with it. Console play, Thorn 2.0, yes. That did look like Thorn. Did we see the name of it? Because it looked like a, a weird version of a Thorn-like weapon, but I wasn't sure if it exactly was Thorn. Uh, Rebel Wild, no, I don't. Rebel Wild says, don't people understand it costs money to make a game? No, apparently everything should be for free, right? Fortnite's free, but they'll spend four or $500 on skins. Ah, taking shots right there. Sorry. Sorry, guys, I had to. Ryan says, this actually looks pretty good. Uh, are the current supers going away? They didn't say anything about that, con man. Uh, K-Dub says, yeah, it looked like a new version of the Thorn. Hold on a second. What else we got in chat? Uh, don't look at me as I bought Destiny 1, the expansion packs one at a time. Okay. I mean, like you can save yourself a little money if you buy the annual pass along with Forsaken. Uh, what, 3v3 Trials? I didn't see the mention that, but power is going to matter. When it comes to um, trials and Iron Banner, um, we are getting new subclasses for each of the uh, for all of them. So that's going to be nine snipers in a secondary slot. So basically, uh, let's see. New York J Money was asking about the different um, the weapon slot changes. So in a nutshell, I'll break it down simple. You can play with the weapon slot changes whether you want to play as Destiny One or do you want to play it as Destiny Two. So for me personally, I like the Destiny 2 loadout. I like to run a hand cannon and an, well, actually right now. Right now I run, yes, I'm one of those scrubs. I run Graviton Lance or I run uh, Manananan. I know it's Manananan. Hey, Black Dragon, welcome to the Mesa Army. Everyone spam some hype emojis and also some uh, Forsaken emojis and some Fallen emojis. Thank you so much for the new sponsor. Welcome to the Mesa Army. I appreciate you being here, man. All right, what was I saying? So weapon slots, so it looks like if, if you want to play like Destiny 1, you can play like Destiny 1's loadout system. You can go with, a, let's say, a scout, a, a shotgun, and a rocket launcher. Or you could be like me, and I could play the way I like to play right now, which is Destiny 2's way. I like having two kind of primaries. You know what I mean? Like, I like to go with something that's, uh, I like to go with, see, Vigilance Wing or Mananan. 
I call it Mananan as a joke. I know it's Mananan. Um, or I like to go Graviton with Origin Story. Or I could go with Better Devils. Crimson. I'm, I'm loving Crimson lately. I just need to get better with, with Crimson. I do have mine as a masterwork. Jack Wolf, thank you for the donation. He says, triple sword loadout. Yeah, you could do that. Uh, Josh Hamrick said on the stream, hey, if you want to run a sniper in your kinetic, in your primary slot, you can go do that. Um, but guys, just keep in mind, they're going to balance it, or they have to balance it, for PvP. So like, you can't go in and run three shotguns, and then... You, I would imagine if you spawn in to PvP with three shotguns, you're going to need um, to pick up ammo for it. So more than likely, it's going to be, I'm predicting, kind of like Destiny 1 where you spawn in with your kinetic ammo. And then if you're running a shotgun and then a rocket launcher, rocket launcher, you're going to have to pick up probably purple crates. And it wouldn't surprise me if they actually put in green crates again for your energy slot, you know? And then if you die, you lose that shotgun ammo. Isaac, Mesa, did you see the new Night Stalker that goes crazy with the Twin Sword Rampage? Yes, that's one of the new subclasses because we're getting nine new subclasses. Neozanther, so how will weapons and elements function if uh, in the kinetic slot? Well, I believe, uh, how do you think weapons and elements, well, I mean, the kinetic slot, I believe, is not going to have any elements. It, it's still going to be the same as that. But I think what they mean is archetypes, right? So you could run a shock, you could run a kinetic shotgun if you want. You could run an energy shotgun. That's pretty much what they alluded to today on stream. Uh, K-Dub says, run three shotties. I will take you out before you get close. <laughs> you got to get ammo for those shotguns, though, of course. Uh, what else we got here? Oh my god, where's Titan Skating on console? Let's see. Uh, yeah, it does look like Ace of Spades is coming uh, coming back, Mr. J. Uh, what's your last name? Mr. J Creator. Uh, Pettit, thank you for the donation. Deej posted a pic on Twitter showing that if you pre-order any of the three DLCs, you can get Cade's Secret Stash. All right, let me pull up Deej's Twitter. Let me see what that is, actually. Uh, da 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 Deej. Hold on, let me look up Deej's Twitter. What did he tweet out? Uh, and what is Kate Stash? Redacted. Uh, da 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 I don't see where he, where did he tweet that? Can you link me that tweet? Deej posted a pic on Twitter showing that if you pre-order any of the three DLCs, you get Kate's Secret Stash. Alright, I can't find that right now, man. What else? Could the Queen be coming back? Hopefully. We're gonna, um, I believe they're gonna reveal the story to us next week at E3. Uh, Cade's exotic stash is a ship, ornament, and armor set. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, your username is Eat My Cringe. I like that one. Let's see. Ryan says, Mesa, intrinsic bonuses like precision frame are still in the game come September. Random rolls are just an addition. This is per Guardian Radio Combo. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it looks like, I guys, I thought they were going to ditch the mod system since we haven't heard about it since April. Because I know Time Splitter sent me a um, message last night showing me that they did talk about that in April. So it looks like we're getting random rolls plus mods. Uh, Anthony, yeah, um, I did get to play. Uh, the announcement was I did get to play Gambit at the Destiny 2 Summit. Uh, I will be bringing you more information next week at E3, and I got to play an early developmental build. That's what I can say. <laughs> That's a secret I, I, I've been holding. And um, also E3, I'm going to tease this now. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I, I don't want to break any NDA. Look, guys, I, I'm going to E3 on Sunday. I'll be back Wednesday. You guys want to keep it locked in here. Turn on notifications because not only will I be uh, – how do I word this properly? At some point, I'm probably going to fire up a live stream from my hotel room on my iPhone to talk about things that I was not ever able to talk about at some point. I don't know when. Let's see. K-Dub, I called random rolls and mods and bulk shader deletion. You did? You did last night, man. Uh, Lage78, thank you for the emoji. And thank you for being a sponsor. What's up, Luke? Uh, can't wait to buy new Eververse stuff. <laughs> they didn't talk anything about that. Uh, does this mean the annual pass means there won't be any more story expansions in year two? No, well, Jamie, it looks like they're going to keep expanding. Kind of like, it looks like we got the Taken King and we were on the Dreadnought for a year. It looks like we're getting two destinations here uh, with Forsaken. And they're going to expand upon that in the winter, spring, and summertime with some releases. Uh, Exotic Nessus says, what's the max level? We don't know that yet, just yet. When will the pre-order be out? Uh, you can go to Destiny of the Game right now, and everything is on their website right now. So, K-Dub sent me the picture of the prices. So, if you buy Forsaken, it's 40 beans. 
in the United States. Forsaken plus the annual pass, which gives you all that other stuff for winter, spring, summer. That's 70 bucks. Then the digital deluxe edition is $80. I really hope they have a physical collector's edition because I love, oh, I just love collecting all that stuff. New sponsor, Pettit Colibri. Thank you so much. Everyone spam Pettit. Some hype emojis and some welcome, some max hello emojis and also some forsaken emojis. Thank you for the new sponsor. Welcome to the Mesa Army. I really appreciate it, man. You are awesome. When is Guardian Con? Guardian Con is, let's see, I'm going to look that up right now. That is July, let's see, July, da, 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 da. Oh, July 12th, I'm leaving, yeah, uh, July 13th and 14th is when Guardian Con is. Uh, yes, let's see, um, Jar Media says, will more be revealed at E3 we don't know about? Yes, and I will be at E3, so turn on notifications. <laughs> uh, what are the pre-order rewards? All right, you want to see pre-order rewards? Let's go to that page right now. Let me close out of this right here. I'm going to scroll down to, here we go, go to you, and we'll take a look. So, with the Digital Deluxe Edition, the Awoken Legend Set, you get a uh, Wrath Majestic Legendary Bow Ornament, uh, a Dirge, is it? No, a Dirge, uh, Paladin Emblem, Vestian Ghost Shell, and you get some Fire Team Medallions. And with the um, Destiny 2 Forsaken Annual Pass that's also included in the Digital de Deluxe Edition, you get the summertime stuff. And let me uh, just go back here because we want to see the summertime stuff. Now, here we go. Yeah, so with the Annual Pass, guys, so you're going to get the Black Armory during the winter, Joker's Wild during the spring, and then uh, Penubra during the uh, summer of 2019. So it looks like um, they're going to keep expanding upon this whole new world that they're building for Forsaken. How long is the Heroes event going to last? That's a good question. I know. It's on the roadmap right here. And it's going to drop July 17th, which is perfect because I'm going to E3 next week. And then the week after, my girlfriend and I are going to Miami for a vacation from the 18th through the 21st. But um, I will bring my MacBook and my microphone in case any more news drops. But to be frank, guys, I just want to be on vacation with my girlfriend and get a tan and go swimming and chill out in Miami. <laughs> Because, oh my god, I need a vacation so badly right now. Uh, Monkey Chillstep says, Mesa, it says that we have nine additional supers. That means we have four super. Uh, that means we have four supers. Because I saw a Titan with a dark bubble around him. Check 8.26 in the reveal trailer. Yes, Monkey, we are getting nine new additional supers. So each well, each subclass is getting a new subclass tree, they said on stream. Uh, Rebel Wild, pa uh, power will matter again with Trials and Iron Banner. Yes. No Mac on the beach, Geek Girl? No, no, I'll bring the MacBook and microphone for the hotel room if I have to make a video, but I really hope I don't have to make any videos because I just want to hang out with my girlfriend, be on vacation, lay by the pool, get my Maltese, Irish, Polish tan on. See, I'm, po I'm mostly Polish, but the Maltese side of me lets me tan. My girlfriend, she's Filipino-Spanish, so she will tan like no one's business. I don't think she needs sunscreen. She needs tanning oil because <laughs> she can tan. Um, they didn't say anything about heavy machine guns. Uh, let's see, Skull Assassin, what's the new weapon mod system uh, about? So, with the new weapon system, they're going to, if you want to play like D1, you can play like D1. If, if you want to play like D2, you can play like D2. Um, Josh actually mentioned if you want to run three shotguns, you can run three shotguns. Um, but you're probably going to be limited on ammo, I'm assuming. Let's see, Sean Foster, hashtag vacations are for working. <laughs> what else? Uh, Big NDN says uh, heavy ammo synths. I, I didn't see that anywhere. I don't think they're going to bring back heavy ammo synths. I don't think. Uh, if every super is get uh, Monkey Chill Step says, if every super is getting a new thing, right? What is the fourth super for each class? Did you get to play this at the Bungie Summit? Monkey, I can't answer that question right now. At a later date, I might be able to. Geek Girl says, vacation is required for a healthy life. True that. I rock the sunblock to avoid burning my skin. Yeah, you know, because, guys, lately I've been going to train in Muay Thai a lot more than often because I need time for personal care, man. Because all I do, if I just sit and work nonstop, I start to lose my mind. I get, like, cabin fever from sitting in front of these one, two, three screens that are in front of me right now. Uh, Tony, it looks like uh, power is going to matter when um, Forsaken hits. So for Trials and Iron Banner, it will hit. What else? All right, guys. So that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to let this thing archive right now. Thank you to all the new sponsors, and thank you for all the sponsors that were here today. K-Dub, shout out to you for being in chat, dude. Much, much appreciated. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. So this is going to archive right now. I'm going to go to work on a reset video. 
And I need to finish the Polaris Lance quest. Um, five out of five to see what we get. So that's it, guys. I love you all. I am.